Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Hi. My name's Mark Hoffman. I'm a proud member of the Conversation Across Time team. I'm a retired history teacher, and tonight's show is very stimulating and very interesting. On the panel is Chief Justice Earl Warren, who was the Chief Justice in the famous Brown v. Topeka Board Education case that integrated the public schools. Oliver Wendell Holmes, who I portray, who came up with the uh, doctrine of clear and present danger, and of course, our host, Vivian Crawford. Tonight's discussion will deal with President-elect Donald Trump's potential nominees to the Supreme Court and how they might deal with the issue of abortion rights, Planned Parenthood. Welcome to Conversations Across Time. Uh, tonight, we are going to have a discussion about the Supreme Court. Seated to your right is Chief Justice Earl Warren. Welcome, Justice Warren. Welcome. And seated to my left, to your left, is uh, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. Welcome, Justice Holmes. Good to be back, Mr. Crawford. Uh, we're so well, first of all, we're very happy to have you back uh, once again. It's been every time you're here, we learn so much from you. And Justice Warren, this is your first time with us. Yes, and we it is. are. We are excited to hear what, what you have to say. Uh, we were going, Justice Black was going to be here. Justice Hugo Black was going to be here, but uh, Justice Holmes, uh, in, in a moment of levity, said to me, well, <laughs> Justice Black couldn't make it. Why can't he make it? Because he's at a Klan meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so that lets you know uh, how interesting tonight will be. So I want to jump in and, and with the first question, and whoever wants to respond, please, it's not directed towards anyone, because I'm interested in what both of you justices have to say. Uh, President-elect, President Trump is going to make uh, some Supreme Court appointments, or at least nominations. And we know that um, one, of the, one of the nominees, or one of the slots that is available for him is the Antonin Scalia spot. Because remember, the Republicans telegraphed a long time ago that they didn't want President Obama to appoint, a rep uh, or at least nominate a replacement for uh, Justice Scalia. The Republicans knew all along what was going to happen. So I'd like you to just tell me, uh, either of you, what you think about President Trump's ability to appoint Supreme Court justices specifically, what that will mean for precedent such as Roe v. Wade, and um, what, what that means for women in this country. Just President Trump having that ability to make an appointment or a nomination. Well, the first thing is he's committed to appointing an extremely conservative justice. And in the campaign, uh, candidate Trump, now President-elect Trump, was adamant in saying that the justice he would appoint would overturn Roe v. Wade and return uh, whether abortion was legal or not to the states. So I foresee that happening. I foresee the uh, Senate confirming. Such uh, a candidate, such an appointment? Yes, such an appointment. And I also believe they will start to roll back uh, abortion rights for women. Now, I personally am in favor of abortion, but not for the same reasons the court ruled in uh, Roe v. Wade. Okay. Uh, I believe in euthanasia, as I stated on another show, so the fact that a, a woman could have, uh, be carrying a retarded child, I'd be all for aborting that child, or a child conceived in incest or rape, I'd be all for okay. that, or uh, uh, a, a fetus that uh, would Is not be viable? Not viable, I'd be all for that. Uh, I would not necessarily find the privacy right in the Constitution as they did in Roe okay. Ro v. Wade. But, um, and I'll let Justice Warren well, speak to that as well. Yeah, I, I, I definitely don't agree with that. <laughs> I mean, well, I, that's why we're here. I think, I think that the, uh, the woman's right to choose is the issue, and abortion is a, it's a, a right that she should yeah. have, an ability to choose. So, so you agree to right to privacy that in Griswold and later on Roe v. Wade, that yeah. there's a constitutional right, right to privacy? privacy absolutely. Okay. I, I, think, I think that it's implicit in the in the Constitution, and 
I'm not that concerned as you are. You seem to look at the glass half empty. I <laughs> seem to look at it half full. But keep in mind that Roe v. Wade, I think, I think the decision came down in 1973. It did. That's uh, almost 40 years ago, or more mm -hmm. than 40 years ago. And since then, we've had a conservative Supreme Court, a conservative majority in the Supreme Court for almost all of those years. And though there has been some cases that have come before it, they've never overturned it. Uh, the justice that just passed away, uh, Scalia, Scalia. Uh -huh. was as conservative as any, I, I don't think that they could nominate anybody more conservative than Scalia. And I don't think that even though they're at this particular point, it would be probably five to four, or maybe five to four, one way or mm -hmm. the other. You never know how Kennedy seems to be on, on the side of abortion rights. I just can't see them overruling Roe v. Wade. But, but I don't time. think that's going to be the case from Jump Street. I don't think they're going to try to overturn Roe v. Wade. What I think is going you, to they're happen. Gonna, they're going to pick at it? Yes. I think they will start to pass legislation in different states. Uh, and then these cases will come before the, the new appointee mm -hmm. of the Supreme Court, and they will uphold the restriction on abortion at the state level, and that will whittle away at Roe v. Wade. For example, they just passed the Ohio. Ohio law, and uh, Ms. Crawford could uh, state the law that would, you know. Uh, well, we, well, wait a second. That, yes. That's been going on for a long time. There have been laws passed in in a lot of states that have restricted the, the right to abortion in a number of different ways. And those cases have come before federal courts, and uh, some cases have been upheld, and for the most part, if they were too restrictive, they've been turned down by the federal courts. They were subsequently appealed to the conservative Supreme Court, and those cases were not accepted for cert. Yeah, when but they don't yeah. accept it for sure. That the decision, it never comes before them. Then the decision but, but of I the federal court of I, appeals holds true. Yeah, but I think now that's they're going to. That's what's they're going going to, on. And don't forget, I think they're going to come before the court eventually, not the first year, but don't forget, uh, Justice Ginsburg is getting up in years, and she's very ill, so he's going to have another appointment uh, that's going to be an ultra conservative. And then he may get another one, so there'll be three more ultra conservatives on the court. And so while these state laws are in effect, I would give it three to four years before Roe v. Wade is totally it's overturned. It's totally overturned. Just because, just because you have a, an ultra-conservative justice doesn't mean that that particular, you can be ultra-conservative in a lot of different areas and not necessarily for abortion rights. You have to understand that the majority of people in this country are women. And to take away a right that's already been guaranteed to women in general would, would go against the, the, the popular Public feeling power. in this country. I, I think if they take a vote, I, I would think that more people would be in favor of the woman's right to choose than would be against it. Yeah, I but think under those circumstances, unless things change dramatically amongst the entire population, so I think that uh, they can take hits at it. The law that was just passed, there were two laws that were before the governor, yeah. before Kasich in Ohio. One was that abortion would be illegal after they heard a heartbeat, which right. was like within five, five or six days. days. Mm -hmm. And the other one was to reduce the, the term from 24 months to, to 20. 20 months. He vetoed the five or six days, the heartbeat part of it, and accepted the one that reduced it to 20. Now, I'm not in a position, I'm not a woman and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not in a position to say that, you know, a baby is viable at 20 weeks or 24 weeks, but that's five months. And that's not un that probably would not be an unreasonable but this yeah, is what right. Justice, this is, But this is what Justice Holmes, I think, that's the point that yeah, he exactly. makes. Exactly. That, in fact, the, 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 restrictive, the restrictive law was vetoed by Kasich. They know they can't get that through. But they did manage to reduce from 24 to 20 weeks. He's saying that they're going to be whittling away at it. Well, I, I, don't, I, I can't answer that question because... But that's what case, I think they're going to do. Every case has to come before the Supreme Court with its own set of facts. And the, the justices, like you and I, have to look at that situation for what it, what it is and what the ap implications are. But Justice yeah, but Warren, you're put up, Justice you're Warren put up you and I, you and I both, that both may agreed, may come and, to pass. and we both agreed, and you alluded to, not alluded, mm -hmm. you stated, that you know, the popular will now is probably pro uh, you know, woman's choice. Let's put mm -hmm. it that way. And we both, in our philosophy, believe the popular will should will out because that's the growth of the country and the growth of the Constitution. 
But these justices that uh, President-elect Trump is considering. Uh, can I throw one out? Yes, go ahead. Uh, how about William Pryor? Yes. Well, and, and William Pryor, um, actually, he made the statement concerning Roe v. Wade. And, 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 and this is taken, I believe this is from the, I think picked this up from New York Times, but I'll, I'll check to make sure that that's where it comes from. But the point is, Pryor made the statement, he described Roe v. Wade as creating a constitutional right to murder an unborn child. Right. Now, now, he well, let me say this. Anybody that, <laughs> anybody, that comes, anybody that comes before the Senate to be confirmed mm -hmm. with a frozen point of view on any of these controversial issues is not going to be confirmed. Oh, yes, they will. That's In all, fact, well, that's no, they won't, because they've never had. Look what happened to I, Bork. Justice, it doesn't happen. Justice Warren, I, I, I disagree with you on that totally and so unequivocally. Give, give an, give us that's an going to be the litmus test. The Republicans. Well, v. Wade is going to be the litmus test. Right. That's going to be the litmus test. Listen, I don't want to discuss politics with you because, of course, we're not involved in politics. But even though the Republicans have a majority in the Congress and in the Senate, At that does not mean that every Republican is in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade. So it's going to but be very, gonna, very difficult for somebody who has the, that point of there's, view there's no to be appointed. There's no justice and or confirmed. appointed justice that's going to be confirmed. That's either, and, and if they avoid the issue, I don't think they'll get confirmed. But there's no justice that's not going to, that, that Trump will nominate that has not already have a record of being opposed to Roe v. Wade. I'm not so sure about well, that. Well, we'll see. The well, list, the list, I... I mean, it's a very listen, I don't know what list. he's going to do, but it's, it's, it's senseless for us to argue at this point what's going to happen when we don't know what he's going to do and who he's going to appoint. Let, but let's just, okay, so we don't for know... For argument's sake, I would say that somebody at that ilk would not be confirmed. Well, I, I, That's th my I think they will, and I think... Of all the campaign promises and the lies he told during the campaign, the one I think he's going to stick to more, I, I don't think he'll build the wall, <laughs> right? I don't think he's going to deport every uh, Islamic believer in the country, but I do believe that he's going to use a litmus test for uh, the, the potential Supreme Court nominees as Roe v. Wade. Why do you believe that? Because Why would he say all those other things and not believe it? And you don't believe this one? Because the number one issue, and I would say besides... You know, um, he, was for, he was for Roe v. Wade before he was against it. Well, yeah. And but, publicly. But, but, so how do you know what his real position the, is? I, I don't know, and I can't read his mind, nor do I want to. Okay. But <coughs> the, the, the point is... When, in the exit polls, and we don't know why uh, he won the election, it could have been Russian interference, it could have been Putin, it could have been hacking, it could have been a million reasons, white working class rebellion, but the number one issue on the exit polls was the Supreme Court. But that's the number a, one that doesn't issue, mean it was Roe v. Wade, because the, one issue, because the, yeah, what, the, no, the, the top number, issue was the gun, the gun issue. The number one issue was abortion, and in fact, all the, all the exit polls show that uh, the evangelicals voted for him overwhelmingly on that issue. Some suburban women who everybody thought would vote for uh, Secretary Clinton voted for him on, on those issues. So that's going to, to me, that's going to be his number one thing, and that's going to be the one promise he keeps. He's going to nominate somebody who told her, and all the, 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 tw the 21 justices that he put out on his list if you look up at their record, either in the state courts or on uh, the circuit courts mm -hmm. that they now sit, they all ruled against women's rights and abortion. They all upheld the strict abortion laws. Okay, now let me just bring up our, our absent friend, Hugo Black, for a moment. Oh, okay. Nobody would have believed when Hugo Black was appointed to the Supreme Court, our friend Hugo Black, right. that he would be in the forefront of civil rights. Yep. Nobody would have believed that. Because before that, he was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. And, and Justice, I, I just want to stop for one moment to say, because I alluded to it in the introduction with, right. with, when, when, when we were talking about the fact that Justice Black wasn't here because he had to go to the Ku Klux Klan meeting. So, so even, yes. though, even though, and this just goes a little deeper into this, even though somebody professes some point of view, that does not mean that when they put on these hallowed robes that we have on now yes. and sit in that hallowed courtroom of the Supreme Court, that they're not going to take that as seriously as possible 
and adhere to the constitutional precepts. This is a case that has already been settled. It's been a case that's been on the books for a long, long time. And to state that just because this possible Try. justice yes, yeah. might be against Roe v. Wade, that it's going to be overturned, I think is really hyperbole. And I don't buy it. Well, I, I, I think I disagree with you. And you, you came to the court uh, from being governor of California, and you had an open mind. Well, I'm you say that, but keep in mind my background. My background was as a prosecutor. Yeah. I was a prosecutor. I was the attorney general of the state before I became governor. And yet when I came on, cases came before me that had to do with criminal procedure. And nobody would have thought that an ex-prosecutor or an ex-attorney general could have ever gotten right, past you. That, that, <laughs> but, would, that would have voted in favor in of your, Gideon versus Wainwright but, yes, or right, Matt or, versus but, Ohio but or Miranda your, or any of those cases. But in your conference, But I did. You but know it, why? Because I knew it was the right, it was thing. The right thing to do. You're right. And I think that all you're of making, these people, you're making two, You're making two statements that I disagree with. Number one, that the times were different and the scrutiny of uh, judges appointed to the Supreme Court is much greater now. So the questions are more pointed and there's more litmus tests. Your, your confirmation hearing or my confirmation hearing were well, way pre, different. Pre-internet. Pre right. And you, even you go blacks. When yeah, but there were confirmation hearings pre-internet that were very contentious. Yes, yes. Bork. Bork, Bork, right. But it's even going to be worse. Thomas, and, Thomas and was contentious. And these people are ideologues. They're not open-minded, and you're saying they're. So going you're to, saying Justice Warren you, as a, is, is open-minded. I think I think you're naive to think that they're going to take the best interests of the country and go against the philosophy they had for the last 20 years. And and I I think they're ideologues, and I think they're stuck in that and they could care less about the right of women. I mean, we have people talking about, even if it's the woman's, uh, she's been raped, that it's, it's, it will be illegal. Paul Ryan thinks it's illegal that if the woman's, at, 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 to, to, it's illegal to give a woman an abortion who's been raped or who has incest. So but let the, me just, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but let me just take this just, just in, another step further. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, which I was, by the way, Chief Justice, and you were acting Chief Justice Act for a while. For a year and a half, yes. Has an amazing responsibility to try to bring the justices together. I was able to do that in a preponderance of the cases that I have. I look at the Supreme Court now, and I see this Chief Justice Roberts is a very, very bright guy. He's conservative, there's no question about that. But I see him as in the same mold, really in the same mold as, as I think I was, in being able to, to bring compromise well, to just, the Supreme Justice Court Warren, and to do the right thing. And I think that'll With all due help. respect, you had a lot of 8 decisions or 9 decisions, mm -hmm. and I would say the overwhelming majority of decisions handed down by the Roberts Court were 5, 4, 6, 3. Because we're much, you're right, well, we're much so more, we're more split now. But, now. but look, at the, look at the cases. It's a conservative court, and it's been a conservative court. Gay marriage came before the court. Would you think that the conservative court would, would okay that and, 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 and make unconstitutional the, the right to marriage law? No. What about... But what, what, what was the decision? What about Roe well, v. Well, Wade, well, well, the well, Affordable well. Care Act, all yeah. of those things that were conservative issues that you would never what, thought what a conservative was, court what would What was do. the vote on the Gay Marriage Act? What was that? What was the, 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 the vote on the Gay Marriage Act? I don't care what, what it was. It was 5-4. It, it was... Okay. A, it was right? Okay. So, so now... You're saying it's partisan politics. It's very clear because right, of the way and, the votes and go. And what I'm saying is, he's go, it, if it came up again and he has one appointment, it might, might hold, and they might hold gay marriage. If he has two appointments, they're going to overturn gay marriage. I don't believe that in a million years. Well, you know, it's... I don't it, believe it. Listen, once rights are given to a, a, a group of people, like were given to, to, to African Americans, mm -hmm. You're not going to take that away. Come on now, Justice. Just, wait a second. Uh, whoa, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I love it. The 13th Amendment was passed 1865. 14th Amendment was passed. Equal rights under the law. States equal, made, equal. made the Bill of Rights apply to all the states. 15th Amendment voting rights. And yet, within five, within, after the election in 1876, which was 11 years later, all those rights were taken away from African Americans. All of them. 
based yes, but, on what? But they weren't. Here's based what, on Supreme Court decisions. Based yes. on other Supreme Court decisions before it. No, no. Based on based on laws that were upheld. Plessy, Plessy versus Ferguson, versus Ferguson. Upheld, upheld state laws that said Jim Crow was legal. So rights can be taken away. Yes, sir. But anything, anything can happen, but it hasn't happened in, 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 the, in the present. I want to ask this question. Sure. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, we have had the, we, we have watched things be eroded. We have also watched, and we know that that was a compromise, which, I mean, had to do with reconstruction and right. get, get the troops out of the South. And so there was a compromise, and we end up with, we're going to let Jim Crow become a, a, a practice. Right. And then Plessy comes then, along then, and then, codifies then, it. And then the, the court upholds it. Yes. So, so we, we look at those things, and we keep saying to ourselves, OK, well, um, we have these high notions for the court. But I, the court under you, Hugo Black was a different sort of man, but he, <coughs> in, he <coughs> came up with this is the right thing to do, which is what you talk about. But because we he have all these. He wasn't the only one like that, by the way. There were, other, there were other justices that came before the court that had conservative views that, that, but, but, that came in through with what but was they were liberal opinions. You were a statesman. They were statesmen. I consider myself a statesman. But the five The people four, now are ideologues, and they could care less about what is right or wrong. They're not all ideologues. You say that, but they're not all ideologues. They are. Who's not? Who want, what conservative? Wait a ideologue? second. What conservative on the court right now besides Justice Roberts, and I consider him an ideologue. Kennedy. Well, but Ken, but the, the rest of the royal ideologues, he's both liberal and conservative. Both he, liberal he, and he, conservative. Yes, he, he, so he makes some opinions. But he's not an ideologue. What, what, there are two ideologues that I can think of, and that's Alito and Thomas. And uh, who else is an ideologue? Uh, the, the liberal judges are ideologues too. Uh, uh, so they my, they yes, may they be are. Ideologues, but sometimes they vote the other way too. Yes, but, they are, but. Clarence Thomas has not, well, he doesn't speak, but he hasn't issued He votes. The, but he could care less about what's right or wrong. Oh, you okay, say that, but I, because he's, you see him that. as a partisan. Absolutely. No, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying I want to make that clear. Absolutely. The, the, the reason that you say that is because we, and, and, and Thomas, I mean, he always followed Scalia. You know, he was, he, whatever Scalia, Scalia said, Scalia I mean, I think. Scalia took money and went. The Federalists, I mean, there's no question <laughs> about that. But that, that happens. But overall, when you look at when you look at it as a body over the over the course of time, mm -hmm. you find that more times than not, way way more times than not, they've done the right what Since we consider we to be the right about thing. You go black, and he changed. Why did Franklin Roosevelt appoint him? Because he knew he would back up all his New Deal legislation, whether he thought it was right or wrong. So he appointed him as a political so ideologue. He, was an ideologue. he didn't care. Also. Okay. Yeah, but he was willing to change the Supreme Court to, to get he his. He wanted to pack well, the I'm just, well, that's, But I mean, when, <laughs> when it's the liberals, I mean, either side, it, the justice is on the court. And, you know, nobody's totally so objective when they rule on anything. And everybody comes with certain and, prejudices. And, right. And my, my, you know, my philosophy, as, as, as uh, uh, even when I was in, uh, writing in a law review, was that judges are influenced by their background and, and what they yes. do. So no one comes with a clean slate, and nobody's totally objective, and uh, they're very subjective, and you can make a ruling come out, you can find a textualism or originality mm -hmm. in the Constitution to fit your purpose, and I just believe that uh, President-elect Trump is going to appoint justices that are total ideologues, that are going to totally uh, uh, pro-lifeline and they're going to eat away at Roe versus. It's not going to be overturned all at once. It, it, it'll, be the, it'll be the reverse of the case you ruled on. It'll be the reverse of Brown. The way they did Brown is get to the states, challenge the state laws, get mm -hmm. the state laws to come before the court. They're going to do the same thing in the, the opposite way on the right to overturn Roe v. Wade. Well, we'll see. But I, I have a, uh, a much more optimistic view of what's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not saying that the the court's going to turn all, uh, liberal all of a sudden. That's not going to be the case. Mm -hmm. But I think there'll be more common sense decisions than decisions that don't make sense. Well, and well, that's you know, what's important. What, what, what common I think, sense for, I mean, we can talk all we want about No, I think, law, so, I think the law, conservative the states sense. like Texas and Alabama are going mm -hmm. to pass very, very, very Strict. restrictive laws 
that they won't say abortion's illegal, but it would be like you'd have to be one in a million to be able to go and get an abortion. Yeah, and I believe the court will uphold those. As constitutional. And in effect, I don't think that the reverses Roe v. Wade. That, I don't think that ultra, ultra conservative view is the view of enough people in this country by a long shot. It's a minority view. And you talk about the evangelicals, and sure, they have a view and they believe the Bible is. Let me ask you something. Bible, and this is literally, very pointed, But Justice. they're a small percentage of the people. Justice in this Warren, in, in 1954, if we had a plebiscite, a referendum on integrating schools, what do you think would have been the vote in the country? It, depend, it depends on the, the country. Oh. Mean, over, over the course of the country? Yeah. The population. Well, how would the population have, have asked right. that question? How right. would they have voted on that issue? Uh, I think it would have probably been 50 50. I think it probably would have lost yet. You ruled the other well, way. I'm because not so she sure. did the right thing. I, I, I know what the right thing was. Right. Yeah. I'm, so but I'm the saying, but, on the court. but I'm saying, even though you, uh, that's say, the point. Even though you that's say that the, the, the majority Listen, of the people might how be. How many in, people in this country, if there was a vote, and there have been votes, by the way, that want to outlaw gay marriage? I mean, Every state was outlawing gay marriage. That's why the case came before the Supreme Court. Right. And, and yet this conservative Supreme Court ruled it unconstitutional to outlaw gay marriage. Ruled, ruled it constitutionally but granted But the states marriage. will figure so out a way it to rewrite. It was the right. same Wait. issue. They, they will figure out a way. Alabama uh, uh, will figure out a way to rewrite Alabama the same law. Alabama does not run the country. No, no, but, he but said then gonna, the state law. They'll figure out a way and, for and Alabama to do it. And it will be challenged in the circuit court. Pryor will uphold the law Pryor's before not be the, the Supreme Court, court and the, the Supreme Court will say the states have it'll be a They'll state's right issue. Delegated to the states, is that what you, and it's yeah. a states' rights it's issue. A states' rights issue. And that's what, that's what Trump said about abortion in the campaign. Trump doesn't, said, have the first, doesn't say, know the first thing about the Constitution. He didn't say, yeah. I'm against abortion, I'm against women's right to choose. He said, we're going to overturn Roe v. Wade so it goes back to the states. He did that to get the votes of the people that he was screaming at. Well, no, we that's that. the point. We well, here's, here's Everything a, else that he said, he's already turned away from. He's not going to deport. I, 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 I agree with people. you that, but he's I not think this is the one. He's not going to do any of this those. Is this, one, is this is the one. This is the litmus test. But this issue he's going to do. I don't believe that. I, I believe it. Well, you know, gentlemen, I, I want to. Um, he's got to face his daughter, Ivanka, every day. And she certainly is not, I, not going to be in favor of that either. So. But, but you know what? I, 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 first of all, abortion was never out of bounds for people with resources. So That's true. You know what I'm saying? Abortions were always available for people that had resources. So that... There were just as many abortions when it was illegal as, of, as there are... And yeah, the number has not gone up. More. Because the, the yeah. lot of the uh, uh, Planned Parenthood, which we'll get to talk about, Planned Parenthood, and uh, you know, giving women uh, contraception and you know, uh, uh, schooling, has reduced the number of pregnancies, so there's less abortions. Exactly. No, exactly. but I'm saying if they, there would be just as many abortions if it was legal or, or illegal. That's true. And the only that's difference true. would be that more women would die as a result that's of illegal exactly. abortions. That's, that's exactly. absolutely And that's true. been true. That's been that, proven that we, in every yeah, country around the world. Historically, we know that's true. Yeah. So that's another thing that they have to consider, and it, it is a health issue, and it's a major health issue. Yep. The, the conservative ideologues that sit on the Supreme Court are 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 not interested in the health. In, in the health of women. Because here's the point, abortions are going to happen. We know that pre Roe v. Wade, there were always abortions for people who had needs. So this, is, to, to me, seems like almost class warfare when you consider that Planned Parenthood is, in effect, servicing a population that traditionally is, has limited medical care. And even if they didn't have the means, well, Ms. there was Ms. always Crawford, a way I, to do I, it. They I, were, there were people who did illegal abortions oh, who yes. did it for... I couldn't agree with you more that it's class warfare. And, and a lot of the things that we're seeing now are class warfare. So the fact that to do away with the woman's right to have abortion and Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics is uh, a way of uh, making it more dangerous for... Uh, minorities and poor white women and poor black women to get an abortion and make it more dangerous for them is absolutely correct. And that's the way it was before Roe v. Wade, and that's the way it'll be after Trump now, appoints now, his justices. Now, just, uh, here's what I want to do, Justice Holmes. I want to put a pin in it. I'm going to ask the audience if you would please tune in next week because this is 
a discussion that impacts 50% of this population. And not just that, it, it affects the families of those women who may be in uh, a very, very bad state if we don't watch what happens with the Supreme Court. This has been Conversation Time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Justice Warren. Thank you, Justice Holmes. Please hang out with me because we need to, we need to come back to this conversation.